The Long Pass, The Pink. You've all seen it executed by Paul Pock, by Kevin De Bruyne and Paul Scholes. And it's a deadly technique that can completely split a defense wide open if you do it right. And today we're going to take a closer look at not only how to do it, but also when to use this pass. And as you'll see, you don't need that much power as long as you have the right technique. But looking at the pros here, it seems so effortless. But once you get the hang of the right technique, which we're going to look at in a little bit, it's going to be easier for you too. Now what we can see here is that a good crossfield pass has some backspin and a good amount of pace to it. And depending on the target, it should also go just above the heads of the defenders, of course, in order for no one to be able to intercept the ball, but also to get the most direct trajectory going to the target that you intend. And if there is a bit of space around you and the player you're trying to hit, you can also try and go for the low pass that just kind of skims the top of the pitch. But that is pretty high risk, so you should really consider when you're going to use this. But what I can also gather from watching the really big guns here is when to do the pass. Because typically, these guys do it to switch the play to the opposite flank when the opposition is crowding one side of the pitch and your teammate has eight kiss of space on the opposite side. And to make sure that you can actually do the pass and it can, well, succeed, these guys always look up and make sure to orient themselves and see that the guy actually has space to run into that the pass is safe to make. Because if it isn't, sometimes they just don't make the pass if it's too high risk. So that's the key. Should you do it or should you wait? Technique wise, this is a lot like a normal backspin shot, but in order to make it more missile-like and less fluffy and uh, balloony, you want to hit the ball a little bit higher than normally. So still hit the lower half of the ball, but instead of just slicing under it, you want to go a little higher. So executing the shot itself, place the ball. You also place your standing leg with your toes pointing directly at the target you want to hit. In most cases, your teammate. Then you swing your shooting foot, and just before you hit the ball, you lock your ankle so that it's tilted a little bit. Instead of having just a flat foot, you actually tip the instep a little bit down in order for you to hit the ball with the top of the instep where the bone is a little bit harder because this is going to give you that hard, powerful sensation of hitting the ball just at the sweet spot. And as I said, hit the ball a little bit higher up, don't slice under it. And the second after your foot has left the ball, or the ball has left the foot actually, you stop your foot to get that really short follow through because this is going to help you get that sweet, powerful backspin. So those are the basics, but what can also help you is your body positioning that can make things a whole lot easier. Now, if the situation allows me in a match, I usually try to approach the ball from approximately a 45 degree angle. Then when I place my standing foot, I usually bend down in my knee a little bit because it's gonna make it more flexible and thus a little bit more stable so I can wiggle around a little bit and still feel comfortable enough to put a lot of power transferring from my foot to the ball. I also really try to keep my upper body upright and straight no matter how angled my legs might be because this is going to avoid any unnecessary swerve. Because spin and curve is the enemy here. If you hit the ball too much on the side, it's going to swerve and it's going to be really difficult to read for the receiver. Plus also, you won't get that straight missile-like trajectory that you really want to have. So go and force yourself to practice hitting the ball clean and straight right in the middle to avoid all this curving nonsense. And if the ball rolls unnaturally in a match, that can happen, force yourself to either take a touch and set yourself better up, or just simply go for a safe pass and wait until the next opportunity arises. Take off. <laughs> Another common mistake is if you succeed in getting the backspin, but the ball simply becomes too fluffy and stays in the air too long. Listen, the point of this pass is to shift the weight of the game and make a quick turnaround. So if the defense has time to run to the other side and adjust and get under the ball because the ball is in the air too long, the moment is kind of gone. So really practice getting the backspin, but shooting a bit higher on the ball to also make it straight 
and powerful. And to do that, you want to start with the basic, which is getting the backspin without adding any unwanted spin on it. So to practice this, you can go to a wall or a fence or anything that will bounce the ball back to you and use the technique we just discussed to simply make a backspin ball to the fence, get it back, and simply try to hit the same spot on the fence over and over again. Start close to make sure you're comfortable and then move further and further away when you feel you're gonna master it. And when you feel completely comfortable getting the backspin with no swerve, you can start hitting the ball a little higher and add some power to it. And if you feel really good, you can go for the advanced plus plus deluxe version, go to the pitch, bring a friend, and then start pinging passes to each other while you're making runs. Pogba, go home, man. So there you have it, my friends, the secret to performing that dangerous, deadly, long cross field pass. But if you have any questions or just suggestions as to what I should do next, hit me up in the comment section right down below. Also, if you have the huts for the black gold beauties, aka the Nike Black Looks Pack that I've worn in this video, you can go and cop them right now at unisportstore.com if you click right over there. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe and the bell notification button to get notified every time we upload a video. And finally, go learn how to take the perfect corner kick by clicking right down there. With well, that's it, guys. I'm signing off. Cheerio.